you know, I may be a very old, elderly minister of education, but I have brought about a radical transformation of Fiji's education system. We are the first government to make education free. We are the first government to have ended all national examinations until sixth form and seventh form. We are the first people to have said that schools can't raise funds from their parents and families. And we are the first government to retire teachers and head teachers and principals at the age of 55. <laughs> This government has been boasting about the freeing up of education under its rule. And yes, it has been a very, very positive measure that no child is now denied a place at secondary school, no qualifying child is denied a place at tertiary institutions. They have either access to scholarships or they are able to take out a loan, which has to be repaid after they graduate. That indeed is good. But I remind you that other governments previously had also begun this task of making education free. Previous governments had made primary education free and they were moving step by step to make secondary education free as well. So it's not true to say that this is the first government which has ever thought of making education free. While we are at it, let me remind this government also of some of the things which they have done which have been extremely damaging to our education system. Firstly, they have removed all these national examinations at primary and junior secondary levels, which in my opinion are the only independent way to test whether our schools, especially the rural schools which traditionally have very high failure rates, whether they are achieving the right standards or not. By letting everybody progress through the system without national examinations, you are reserving for these people the shock that when they get to Form 6 and Form 7 and they apply to either USP or Fiji National University or Fiji University or some university overseas, they are found to not have the appropriate standards. And that's it. By that time it is too late to do anything about them. This government has also stopped schools from raising money for all their facilities. I can assure you that you talk to the top schools in the country, second school, secondary schools or primary schools, they will tell you that the per capita grant that the government is giving them is not enough to provide the quality education. Why was there a need to stop schools from raising money independently? All that happens, of course, is that schools are being forced to provide a low quality education at school, while the rich children will go home and their rich parents will provide them with all the computers and books that they need. Not a very wise move at all. And then let us look at the policy of retiring civil servants at the age of 55, which has affected so many head teachers, so many heads of departments, so many school principals. These are the people who are the prime of their productive life. They have the experience to contribute most highly, and that experience cannot be contributed by young graduates just coming out of USP or FNU. We could not afford to lose these people, and yet this government applied the 55-year retirement rule to these experienced people who we could ill afford to lose. There's two paradoxical sides to this, of course. They did not apply that rule to themselves. You had a senile minister of education who stayed in place despite being extremely elderly and bringing about all these negative changes in our education system. It also did not apply to members of the Beni Marama cabinet. And another irony is that we exported many of these teachers to Pacific Islands, telling them these are very, very good, this will be very good for you. When we already rejected them from our own system, we are exporting them to other Pacific Islands. <laughs>